What we're going to be talking about today is the conical pendulum in simple harmonic motion. Now, in order to illustrate this, we have as an example here a past paper question from OCR Physics A. It's paper three, which is called Unified Physics, and from 2017, this is question six in particular. I've given a link to the uh, full paper in the description down below. Okay, no, now let's have a look at this question. So we have this conical pendulum over here, and um, we have the radius at which this pendulum is actually moving. We have the weight of the ball, which is 1.2 newtons, and the ball is moving in a horizontal circle with radius 0.045 meters with a time period of 0.67. 0.67 seconds. Now you can immediately actually calculate the speed of this because you have the radius and you have the time period. So as I'm working for this question, I'm even going to make a little note to say that the velocity is going to be distance, which is 2 pi r, which is the circumference of this circle over here, divided by the time period t. So from this information, we can immediately work out the velocity. The string is at an angle theta to the vertical and the tension in the string is T. Label one other force acting on the ball. Well, the force of gravity is the only other force which is acting on the ball and this will be acting vertically downwards. Please make sure to use a ruler in the exam. Do not lose any marks on these which are quite easy. And additionally, it's asking us to both draw force, which is vertically downwards, and also label it. Uh, because this is the weight, I'm just going to put a little W on there, but you could have equally have put mg or 1.2 newtons, which is the value of the weight. Okay, well, part B is asking us to resolve the tension T horizontally and vertically and show that the angle theta is equal to 22 degrees. Okay, well, let's get started with resolving this vector. So this tension T, this is going to have two components. It's going to have a horizontal component, which is pointing to the left, just like so, just like the Beyonce song, to the left. And uh, we have another one, which is pointing straight upwards, like so. Because the, uh, the upwards component is the adjacent component to the angle theta, I'm going to say, I'm going to call the, this one, this component to be equal to T cosine theta. So we can just write this down as T cosine theta, like so. And the horizontal component is opposite. Ooh, what's happening here? Let's try again. Uh, the horizontal component is the opposite to the angle, and this will simply be equal to T sine theta, like so. So T sine theta. Now, something which is really interesting here is because this pendulum is neither moving up nor down, the weight has got to equal the upwards component. So T, so what we can right over here. In fact, I'm just going to write this with a different color just on the side here that T cosine theta is equal to mg and T sine theta, like so. The component which is pushing the, uh, the mass towards the center, this is actually the component which is making the mass turn. In fact, this will have to be equal to the centripetal force. So remember the centripetal force is mv squared over r. Okay, perfect. So we have two equations over here. t cos, cos theta is equal to mg and t sine theta is equal to mv squared over r. Now what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of a mathematical trick. So um, I'm just going to rearrange the above equation, one of those equations for t, and then I'll substitute back into the other equation. So I'm just going to take the first one. I'm just going to say that the tension t is equal to mg divided by cosine of theta. So all I've done 
is uh, just literally rearrange for t. Now what I'm going to do next is just bring that expression and substitute it in there. So rather than t, I'm going to eliminate that. I'm going to write mg over cosine over cosine theta multiply by sine of theta and this is going to be equal to mv squared over r. Okay, now we can see that we can do some cancellations. My favorite part of physics, so we have the mass which is on both sides of the equation, so that can go. And what we are left with is sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta is equal to v squared of r. We've almost missed the g. But uh, so that g, if we arrange for sine theta over cosine theta, uh, we can just bring it over to the other side. So this will be over here. So we have sine theta over cosine theta is equal to v squared over rg. Now sine over cos, if you remember correctly, this is equal to the tangent of theta from trigonometry, which is going to be equal to v squared over rg. Now remember in this case we are performing circular, well the mass is performing circular motion. So that means that the speed just as we wrote over here at the very beginning of the question is going to equal to 2 pi r over t. So I can do some substitutions. Now the speed will be 2 pi r and the whole thing, oops, we need to divide by the time as well. So it's going to be 2 pi r over t, and then this whole expression is squared, and then we will need to be dividing this by rg. Okay, really good. Now we are ready to substitute into this expression. So in order to find out the angle, I'm going to need to take out the inverse tan of this expression. So let's just write down that theta is equal to the inverse tan of 2 pi. Now my radius is 0 0.045 over here, so 0 0.045 meters, divided by my time period, which if I remember correctly was 0 0.67 seconds. Yep, there it is, 0 0.67 seconds. So I'm going to divide that by 0 0.67 seven and this is my velocity now this needs to be squared so uh, please don't forget that square it's vital in fact it's so important i'm even going to draw this with a different color so this is squared and i'm going to divide that by rg which is 0 0.045 that's my radius multiplied by g which is the gravitational acceleration 9.81 and if I put that into a scientific calculator, we need to be quite careful when we input this because there's quite a lot of numbers, there's quite a bit of scope for error. We're going to get 21.969996, etc. And because in this question we're using two significant figures, yeah, we're using two significant figures, then this is going to equal to 22 degrees, which is exactly what we were asked to show. Okay, folks, so hopefully this makes sense. Um, we have the following question over here, in which we have a conical pendulum. The upwards component, t cos theta, is going to balance out the weight. t sine theta is going to provide the um, centripetal component, so it's going to equal to mv squared over r. I've done some mathematical trickery by rearranging for t and then substituting it back into the original equation. Rearranged for tan of theta, given that sine over cos is equal to tan, and um, we have substituted some values to find that the angle is equal to 22 degrees. Hopefully this makes sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below, and please consider subscribing.